A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because of their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among, among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable and the whole community, to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit. Also, <coughs> Philip, Prochorius, Nicanor, Timothy, Parmesia, and Nicholas of Antioch a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large, even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. Fabum Domini reading from the letter of St. Peter, first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like a living stone, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house 
to be a priest, holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it is thus in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, it is value for you who have faith, but for those who without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praise of him who called, out, called you out of darkness into this wonderful life, light. Ebum Domini. says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus Fabiscum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. V. 
Erbum Domini. In the second reading today, St. Peter, our first pope, is inviting us to a deeper relationship with Christ. He says, come to him. After calling Christ a living stone, he encourages us, like living stones, to let ourselves be built into a spiritual house. And looking at that image can be helpful. See ourselves as living stones. A stone or a rock is something that's solid, it's stable, and it can, it can withstand some pretty heavy force without being crushed or without breaking. And regarding our spiritual lives, we are like living stones receiving life and stability from our relationship with Christ, which grows as our prayer life grows and as we receive the sacraments. St. Peter also calls us in the second reading today a chosen race, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. So we're a chosen race. God chose us, but he also gave us the freedom to accept that calling. And in return, to choose him rather than what the world offers us. And we see the consequences of that choice in the reading. If we choose the Lord and we believe in him, we will not be put to shame. But St. Peter says if we don't choose the Lord, we'll stumble and we'll fall through our disobedience to his word. We're also a royal priesthood. By virtue of our baptism, each of us has been incorporated into the royal priesthood of Christ. This is distinct, though, from the sacrament of holy orders, the ministerial priesthood. But each of us, again, by virtue of our baptism, exercises our royal priesthood by offering spiritual sacrifices. This is what Peter just mentioned. It can be the offering of ourselves to God, making the morning offering every morning. Lord, I offer you myself, my joys, my sorrows, my sufferings, everything, and unite it to the holy sacrifice of the Mass, especially during the offertory. We offer ourselves when the paten, when the chalice are offered. We're also called by St. Peter in the reading today, a holy nation. Each of us is called to holiness of life. Each of us is called to grow in the perfection of charity, our love for God and neighbor. The saints are great examples of this holiness of life and virtue lived out very practically. And we have two more newly canonized saints as of yesterday, Saints Francisco and Jacinta, to show us. And again, these are additional examples to show us the way of virtue. They show us that the gospel and our prayer lives can be lived out very generously. Saints are joy-filled people and they love others even heroically. And we are often inspired by their witness and also whenever we see anyone acting virtuously or striving to, live a holiness, striving to live holiness of life. This is very inspiring. And God desires each of us to become saints. And may we desire that as well and seek to be that holy nation that St. Peter is calling us to be. And in the gospel today, we hear our Lord say that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. Sometimes we may feel like we've lost our way in life or things are very confusing. Jesus says in response, come follow me. I am the way. And we're guided along the way by reading sacred scripture, the very clear teachings of the church. And if we follow him, he will lead us to his father's house she said in the reading today in the gospel that he's going to prepare a place for us. May we always keep our eyes fixed on him and follow him faithfully through this pilgrimage on life. He is the way. Jesus is the truth. And he doesn't just teach the truth. He is the truth. He is truth itself. He is reality itself. And it would do us well to immerse ourselves in his word, in sacred scripture, especially in the Gospels, to try to conform our lives to his. And he also said that he is the life. He came that we may have life, and we might have it to the full or have it abundantly. 
We received a share of his divine life and baptism, and it continues to grow in us and receive an increase whenever we receive the sacraments worthily and devoutly. So we strive to follow him more faithfully each day, to listen to and conform our lives to his truth, and receive his life with receptive and grateful hearts in Holy Communion. And today, of course, we celebrate Mother's Day in the United States as well as in over 80 other countries throughout the world. We should be very grateful for our parents every day, but today in a special way we particularly honor our mothers and all mothers, whether they're living or deceased. We would not be here without our mother, and they made many sacrifices for us. So we thank God today for the gift of our mothers, and what better way to honor them than to strive to live a holy and virtuous lives. By striving to live holy and virtuous lives, that would truly make them proud in the good sense. We also remember today in a special way, a spiritual mother to many of us, Mother Mary Angelica. We continue to pray for the repose of her soul and we thank God for the gift and witness of her life and all that God has accomplished through her life. And of course, we cannot fail to mention the mother of us all, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And to show our love and devotion to her, immediately after Mass, we'll have the May crowning and we'll pray the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary and we'll renew our consecration to her. It was at the foot of the cross when our Lord told those words to St. John. He wasn't merely making a suggestion that Mary might be our mother, that she would be our mother. He said, behold your mother. He gave us to her and he gave her to us. John represented each of us at the foot of the cross. This has been the constant tradition of the church. And St. John Paul II, in his encyclical Redemptoris Mater, or Mother of the Redeemer, said that the mother of Christ is given as mother to every single individual and to all mankind. We see this not only at the foot of the cross, but also in the sense that Mary's son, Jesus, is the head of the mystical body, the church. And we are members of the church cannot separate the head from the body. St. Paul said in his letter to the Colossians that Christ is the head of the body, the church. And in his first letter to the Corinthians, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Mary is the mother of both the head and the members of the body. And her motherhood is truly a gift to us from God. St. Teresa of Calcutta passed along this advice. She said, if you ever feel distressed during your day, call upon Our Lady. Just say this simple prayer. Mary, Mother of Jesus, please be a mother to me now. Mary, Mother of Jesus, please be a mother to me now. I must admit, she said, this prayer has never failed me. Mary, Mother of Jesus, please be a mother to me now. And I'll conclude with this blessing for mothers. Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with the spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen.